Butcher of Basra here, bringing you my fifth commentary video for Napoleon Total War. This is an online multiplayer battle, one versus one, on the Italian grassland map. I'm in command of the Austrian army, and you can see my build up here on the screen. This was one of my earliest online battles which was ranked, and the rules for this engagement were a maximum of two artillery pieces, and no fixed artillery. This is actually one of my favorite maps, and here's a quick bird's eye view of the terrain. My opponent, Bearhug Eger, is in command of the Russians, and over here you can see his build on the top left corner of the screen. Now I know you're probably sick of watching me playing the Russians, but unfortunately, the majority of players at the time I played this battle were very fond of the Russian faction. This battle focuses on two concepts, choosing the right terrain to fight on, and how to effectively maneuver your units on the terrain you have chosen. Now if you take a close look at the minimap, you'll find that the map has numerous bottlenecks in the center and two stretches of grassy flatlands on either side where both players deploy. Before you go to battle on this map, you have to consider two things. One, the number of units you have, and two, whether your opponent makes any effort to pin you down in the bottlenecks. And over here you can see that I'm the only one who's really making any effort to push forward. My opponent is content with simply sitting back and pounding my advancing men with 20 pounder unit one fire. In a way, this is a good thing because without him moving, I can easily move my entire force through the bottlenecks without any hindrance. This allows me to easily attack him on the nice flat stretch of land that he's deployed on. Had my opponent advanced forwards, I would have been pinned down on my side of the bottleneck and his unicorns would have in fact inflicted a lot more damage on me. However, by allowing me to freely negotiate through this choke point, I can now use the entire force of my army on terrain which greatly favors a large number of units, and that is flat terrain, and a large army is exactly what I have. Getting stuck in a bottleneck with a big army won't allow you to use your army as a single force due to the lack of space for maneuvering. So if you have a larger army than your opponent, it really pays off to be aggressive in a way because it allows you to choose the terrain where the battle is fought. And over here, I've taken advantage of the fact that my opponent is camping by advancing forward and dictating where the fight happens. Perfectly flat terrain usually favors bigger armies because the extra space and lack of obstacles gives you the opportunity to easily outflank a smaller force, and that's the essence of my battle plan. I've done a short time lapse here, and as you can see, my army has successfully crossed the bottleneck and I've taken minimal casualties from artillery fire. He did manage to rout one of my line infantry units with his unicorns, but I'm not really concerned about that. I realized that there was a forest in front of my main body that was unoccupied by enemy troops, bar one unit of Russian Jaegers. So I decided to seize it knowing that forests give you a great amount of cover against enemy bullets. On my right flank, I've positioned two units of Ulans to overlook my opponent's left flank. Seeing that they were stationary, he seized the opportunity to charge them with his Ulans. However, I managed to counter charge his Ulans just before they made impact with mine, thus negating their charge bonus against a stationary target. And this has signaled the beginning of the battle. And right over here, I charged a unit of Ulans into one of his units of inferior Cossack cavalry and my opponent responded to this by quickly turning a unit of line infantry to face the rear of my charging Ulans. So I'm going to respond to this by bringing up the Emperor's Own, which is an elite Austrian line unit, to return fire on his line infantry. And he, ma he managed to charge in a Lancer unit into their flank, but I wasn't really paying attention here, and so I didn't put them into square formation. Over here I managed to charge in a unit of lancers into the rear of his cavalry that is attacking my emperor's own and that is going to cause them to rout pretty soon. Meanwhile the battle is raging on in my center but the fact that Austrian line is superior to Russian line means that I have the upper hand. My opponent took advantage of the fact that my left flank was slightly exposed and decided to move up three units of Jaegers to try and harass my left. And again, I'm using my flank overload tactic where I overpower one of my opponent's flanks with a superior base of fire. In this case, it's his left flank. Once I crush that flank, I can move in on his center from two directions, his newly destroyed flank and also directly from my center. And this works every single time when an opponent decides to camp. Anyway, 
Seeing that my opponent was starting to push up skirmishers on my far left, I decided to redeploy the units on my left flank in center to my right flank, and this is going to force him to move his skirmishers further forward in order for them to be in range of any of my units. However, my opponent doesn't know I have a hidden unit of Hulans way back in the forest where I deployed, and I am now going to move these guys out of their hiding spot for a surprise attack on the rear of his unsupported Jaegers. At this point, my opponent noticed my unit of Lancers heading towards his unsupported Jaegers, and so he started to move a unit of heavy cavalry which was behind his lines to intercept them before they could wipe them out. And over here I finally managed to charge my Lancers into his Jaegers, and I'm going to kill quite a few of them before his heavy cavalry rudely interrupts their attack. And remember, light cavalry are very well suited for attacking units such as unsupported skirmishers and artillery. I tried to pull back my lancers towards my howitzers where I had a unit of line infantry nearby, but I think my howitzers misaimed one of their shots and ended up taking more of my cavalry than his. Meanwhile, I've managed to sneak a unit of lancers and a unit of cuirassiers behind my opponent's line in an attempt to take out his 20 pounder unicorns, but he quickly responded by moving his general to intercept them. Now this was a bad move because I'm obviously going to charge straight at him and killing him is obviously going to weaken the resolve of his army. Back where my howitzers are, my opponent seems to have forgotten about his unit of heavy cap that was chasing down my unit of lancers, and as a result they're going to come under fire from my line infantry units that are guarding my howitzers. And over here I've finally taken out his general with my cavalry. And as you can see here I'm going to continue to encircle what is left of his army with my superior numbers of line infantry. After taking out his general, I quickly went for his unicorns in an attempt to take them out, but my cavalry were too tired and two depleted, and ended up routing before they could wipe them out. And I'm going to continue to maneuver my men in such a way where I can maximize the amount of firepower I can lay down on his men. And over here on my left flank, he finally moved his unit of heavy cavalry that was being shot at by my line infantry near my howitzers, and he's going to charge these guys into this unit of line on my left flank. I quickly responded by forming my men into a square, and the results were pretty devastating. Anyway, the remainder of the battle is just going to show me outnumbering and encircling the rest of my opponent's men and finishing them off. So, good game to my opponent Bearhug Eger. The points to take away from this battle are that you should always avoid bottlenecks when your opponent has superior artillery. Also, choosing the terrain that suits the composition of your army is a sure way of achieving victory. And to choose your terrain, you have to keep in mind that being aggressive will always allow you to dictate where and when the fight happens. Playing aggressively also strains your opponent's micromanagement and this can affect their ability to make suitable responses to your maneuvers and tactics in the heat of battle. Always take the initiative. Again, thank you for watching people, I hope you enjoyed this commentary video. Also make sure you check my channel for updates on upcoming videos. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe.